In this episode, I take a bunch of scrap PTFE tube and I turn it into a shop vac adapter that allows me to vacuum tiny particles without vacuuming up the little tiny screws and bolts. I'll show you how I did it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters and they get special access to ChepClub.com. So join us. Here's the problem I'm trying to solve. I 3D printed these trays for the edge of my bench to catch little screws and bolts and it works fantastic, except it also catches little pieces of dirt, sawdust and everything else. I needed a way to vacuum that. The first thing I did is I had to make the adapter that would fit over my shop vac hose. And I'm using Tinkercad as usual and I love this. This is a great simple project for anybody to do. So I brought in a cylinder, I made it 36 millimeters in diameter and that matched one of the adapters already on my shop vac. So now I needed to hollow this out to 32 millimeters. So I bring in a cylinder hole and made that 32 millimeters in diameter and made sure it was taller than the cylinder I already have. So I'm gonna make this hollow all the way through and I'll put a cap on this in a minute and I'll show you how that's going to actually hold the PTFE tube. So I got the two the way I want them, the size I want them, now I just need to align them. So I grab them both, grab the align tool, align in the X and Y direction. It's going all the way through. I'm going to bring this hole up a little bit more because I want it to cut into the cap that's going to go on top of this. So there, I've got that set. So now I want to bring in this half sphere, but the first thing I'm going to do is put the work plane on top of the cylinder. So now when I bring the half sphere in, it goes perfectly on top of the cylinder that's going to result from the whole cutout. Now I made the half sphere 36 millimeters in diameter, and I'm going to grab all these and center them again in the X and Y direction. That way everything is perfectly centered to each other. And then I'm going to take the half sphere and I'm going to make it just a little bit taller because I want more surface area for the PTFE tube to stick into, and it's going to be an interference fit, so a tight fit. So I grab all of these, group them together, and now it should cut out the center of this guy. And if I make this into a hole, you should be able to see. You can see where it's cut out. So it's a very simple design, but this should fit right over my shop vac. So now the next step is to cut out the holes for the PTFE tube. One of the shape generators that I've favorited is the Circle Array. And this thing's really handy for something like this. So I can set the radius to 10 millimeters and stretch it out and then I can come to the top here and I tell it I don't want squares I want round or cylinders and then I can set the diameter of those cylinders to 4.5 millimeters and I now have a perfect arranged set of holes for the PTFE tube to stick into. The only thing I'm going to add to this is a center one but you can see how I can just align them in the center and I'm ready to go. So now also for my favorites I have a 4 millimeter hole pre-designed. I'm just going to modify that to 4.5 millimeters. I'll stretch it up a little bit and now I'm just going to center this to everything at once and then I should have one centered hole and then the circular one all the way around it from that shape generator. So once I've got those I just group them together and that's it. That's the design. Pretty simple, right? If I size these holes right the PTFE tube should fit tightly into it. So I download the .stl file and I'm going to print it upside down and I'll show you why in a minute. Actually I'm going to print it both ways but I got this RDPLA profile for the Artemis, the CMEC Artemis that I'm going to use. I got this from Jim Carter, good friend of mine. And I loaded in 35 percent. I'm going to print at a 0.3 layer height. I set the outline perimeter at two walls and uh, just the other stuff, slight modifications, no big deal. You can set this to whatever you want if you're going to build one of these. Now I am going to use a raft, not a skirt, but a raft because I'm going to put supports on the bottom to support the rounded bottom because I flipped it upside down. So I want supports, but I only want supports from the bed, not all the way through this thing. That way I, it prints a little bit faster. Cooling is enabled, temperature 60 degrees on the bed, and primary extruder, I'm going to do 205 and then 215. This is all in his profile and it works fine for me. Um, doesn't look like I have to change anything else here. Speed is 60 millimeters per second and I'm ready to go. So I click OK and then I'm going to prepare to print. And there it is. You can see the little raft and it says it's going to take 54 minutes on the Artemis. So that's pretty quick. 
Here's a time lapse of it printing. I'm using my Filament Friday Filament blue color this time. I love the way this looks when it's finished. So there's the finished print upside down. And just for everyone who would question it, why didn't I print it the other way? Here it is without a raft, without supports. It's rounded, so I really didn't need supports, but here's the difference. Look inside. The one on the left is without supports, printed straight up, and the other one is upside down with my little raft. I could have printed it straight up with supports, but then that would have been a mess to clean up and would have taken a lot longer to print. So I think my way works fine. And now I need to cut the PTFE tube. I use my Capricorn tool to cut this PTFE tube. It does a great job, cuts it nice and straight. So I cut some equal lengths, and then to put it into the 3D print, you just push it in place, and it fits tight. The further you go in, the tighter it gets. So it worked out really well. So once I got all the pieces cut and in place, then I could just cut them even at the end if some were a little bit longer than the others. And here's the nozzle with all the PTFE tube installed and cut to pretty equal length. So now I need to connect this to my shop vac hose. And I got this dimension right because it goes on nice and tight. And now the moment of truth. Will this thing really work? So I turned on my shop vac and I went into the trays and I tried to vacuum up all the dust without vacuuming up the little screws and bolts and nuts. And man, this thing looked to be working fantastic. Every tray I went down, it just vacuumed the little stuff right up and just left the screws and nuts. Occasionally a little screw or nut would get vacuumed up but just held and I could easily pull it off the end. And when I was done, I just shut off the shop vac and all the little particles that were on the end, just most of them just shook right off. I had a few particles that ended up inside the tube and I just cleaned them with a little tool that I have for cleaning up PTFE tube. So here's a before and after picture. If you don't have a bunch of PTFE tube lying around or you don't have a 3D printer, you can actually buy an adapter like this on Amazon, but mine has the PTFE tube, which is high temperature resistant. So I can vacuum in high temperature areas without worrying about it melting. And I don't think you can do that with the ones on Amazon. But anyway, I'll put a link to it in the description below for anybody that wants to go that route. You can easily design this yourself the way I showed you in Tinkercad. If you want the design, I do have it on my chefclub.com site. You have to be a dollar member or more to get access to those files that help support the channel. If you like this type of video, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month gets you into Chep Club and also Patreon. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.